Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, Ledwing here. Just giving you a quick update, a little window onto how recording Omnipresence is going. Uh, right now, I'm working on the intro track. It is codenamed End of the World Bank. I'm not really sure why. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd give you a window into some of the stuff we're doing. I'm recording right now. Um, I'm doing the left channel guitar rhythm. Uh, that is being done with my trusty Rena guitar, which I love. And that is going into an Axe FX2. And I'll show you the, the tone that I'm using. All right, so um, just so you know, basically what we're doing is recording dry tracks for everything we send that out and our mastering guy um basically reamps everything with real amps um so th these tones are pretty much for kind of for a pre-mix demo and then also kind of guides me on what tones i want to use live but basically this is a tone i picked up from i think it was daw premix dash tones.net or dot com or something um, and it's basically, so you have the effects loop block first, so you have the guitar coming in and then right away this block shoots off a copy of just the dry signal, um, to a separate output. So basically what the, uh, what the interface is getting is, um, wet on the left and dry on the right. Um, so anyways, from that, it goes into a drive, which is T808. I think that's a tube screamer replica and the drive is pretty much down for the most part. Um, then after that, it goes into a model of a, I believe it's an EVH 5153 the smaller 51 and the blue channel. Then from there, uh, we go into the tone craft. So basically I think it's, this is the cab model that this came with. Um, I don't remember what it was exactly, but if it's USA, I'm assuming it, it's gotta be some sort of a Mesa, uh, Mesa model. Now, for my live tone, which maybe I'll talk about in a different video, I use something slightly different. Um, and then from here, just a little bit of verb. But again, this is just for demo purposes, but figured out that this is, this is a really good way to have things because when we listen to the songs before sending them out to mix, it's a pretty good idea of what we're going to get. So as I'm doing these rhythms, I'm trying to really keep things as tight as humanly possible. So uh, one of the things I will do is sometimes record uh, with just the metronome, the guitar, and kick going if I'm really trying to match things up. So f an example of that, so this is a portion I just did uh, with full instrumentation. <laughs> Right, and then just kick, just kick and dry. We'll listen to that. All right, just kick and wet. So by going back and forth with that, I really can make sure everything's super, super, super tight. Um, I try to, like when I record things, I try to listen to it in a lot of different contexts, which I think makes the quality better in the long run. That wasn't really as tight as it could be, so I'm gonna take my own suggestion and do kick and guitar metronome. Uh, 
uh, a little bit better. So yeah, I just do that 100,000 times. And then um, what I like to do to keep the level of tightness up for live shows is that sometimes yeah, I'll practice to the recording, but better yet, you can if, if you have all the separate tracks, you can come in here and basically just have like, uh, you know, you could have your practice amp. If you, if you have it plugged in, you can try to have that like pan right and then have the recording pan left and then have a uh, metronome going and you will get really tight that way because you, you have this scaffolding and you're, you're not going to deviate too much. If you do that a hundred thousand times, then, then it's good. All right. Well, anyways, this was just a quick update on how we're doing things. Maybe I'll give an update on, uh, give an update on bass or drums pretty soon. Um, but yeah, big news coming, which is what every band says, but we mean it. See ya.